Here's to the ladies, the fair and the weak. Fair they are, we'll all admit. But who dares call them weak? Our modern girls play as hard and with as much vitality and stamina as any man. How do they do it? Where do they find all that energy? That seemingly inexhaustible store of pep and ginger? What is that whipcord resilience that lets the weaker sex play half the night, then bob up clear-eyed, ready for the next morning's work? Um, I remember growing up in the 60s, and I was little, and that was the generation of stay-at-home moms, and your mom was there to make you breakfast when you went to school, and your mom was there when you got home, and your mom entertained you, and your mom drove you everywhere, and your mom cooked and cleaned and shopped, and dad came home and sat in front of the TV, and I remember thinking that um, sure, it was nice to have your mom home, but my mom had no life. My mom's ultimate responsibility was to serve her family. She had no aspirations of her own. Uh, she wasn't allowed to really think about what she wanted to do with her life because her role was mother and her role was to stay home and take care of everybody. When my sister and I left and went to school, um, to college, she realized that she had nothing else to do in her life and went out and got a job and discovered that she had interests and it upset my father a great deal. And I remember them always almost getting divorced. I've been very lucky in my 35 years of nursing to accomplish everything that I set out to do and probably way more than most women in my generation. In pursuing cardiology I um, worked on a step-down unit and then went right to cardiac intensive care. I discovered there was a need for people recovering from heart disease. Luckily worked in a facility that allowed me to develop a program for people that were rehabilitating from heart attacks and bypass surgery. I launched that program in one hospital and then went on to a university medical center, launched another cardiac rehabilitation program there. I think looking back at media in the 60s and 70s, um, and especially more recently seeing some black and white shows and remembering that I watched those then and thought that they were normal, that women wore dresses um, and high heels when they cleaned, when they cooked, when they drove their kids to school, they always looked fabulous, their hair was done, their makeup was on. In magazines, everything was about how to serve your man better, how to serve your home better, how to make better meals. Cooking shows started then, Julia Child, how to cook a better dinner for your husband, how to impress your husband, you know, candlelight and, and um, you know, dad came home in his suit and you pulled out his chair and he sat down. Yeah, I remember that. To make an omelet is a hot fire and you need a bowl, and you need some butter, and some salt and pepper, and some eggs. I think if we're talking about the 60s and 70s, most of everything I saw focused on the housewife image. Um, I don't remember even thinking that it was possible for my mom to have a life outside of our home. I think the ones that stick out for me were the ones that I loved the most. That would have been something like Little House on the Prairie or The Waltons. And the first woman I remember then seeing have a job was uh, Julie on the love boat. She was the cruise director. My name is Mariah Fund. I'm studying mechanical engineering at the University of Tennessee. I'm pretty involved with the Society of Women's Engineers on campus and also a member of Tau Beta Pi, which is the Engineering Honor Society. I've worked as a co-op at the Vogel Nuclear Power Plant for Units 3 and 4. These are new reactors they are building and it is the first reactors to be built in the past 30 years in the U.S. So it's a new technology they're using, so it's pretty cool to be interactive with those. I've worked in our engineering department, kind of getting everything ready for operation, which is supposed to come in the next couple years. So. 
I'd say we'll start with it being freshman year. It was probably the worst year as a female engineer. Being around the guys, I was in a lot of classes that was like all engineers, mainly guys. And honestly, I don't think the guys like really knew how to take it then or didn't take me seriously as well. I even had one guy say to me one time when the report was brought up, he looked straight at me and said, that sounds like a woman's job. And I knew from then on like, this was definitely gonna be something I had to like work towards to earn the respect. I think there's a couple reasons, just obviously the fact that it's always been that way. Women have always been kind of inferior to men, um, less than men and as far as like career-wise and since we've always been the stay-at-home woman. So when it came time to work and stuff, we're like, oh, women can actually do things. Like, whoa. <laughs> How many girls are actually pursuing a STEM career, like in engineering? Not that many. And the ones that do, like, yeah, you can succeed if you like, put your effort. But I don't think a lot of women nowadays don't try just because maybe they feel like they're inferior and maybe that's just an outlook they have or they feel like they can't do it or make it past the basic classes. The Society of Women's Engineers, we put on outreach events to promote women in STEM. We have an, a big event called Tomorrow's Engineers Today, and it's for middle school and high schoolers to come, and we just have fun with them, show them some fun experiments, we show them some stuff that real engineering students are working on, like different design projects and stuff. And it's really a great opportunity to just expose them to it. And I don't think they really realize, like, you can do that, like this is something you can do. I didn't know I was going into engineering until into my senior year of high school and that was at, because my brother was engineering, I was like, hey, this is cool, you should do it too. <laughs> like I had never thought about being in STEM before, so. Yeah. I was in a group with all guys, um, all men, and my group, group of engineers that I was working with <laughs> and they treated me just like one of them and they brought me in, taught me everything I needed to know and helped me out along the way. Didn't treat me any different like a woman. So it's definitely a different outlook. We have these operators of the plant. So on the units one and two side that are actually operating, I got to spend some time over there with um, one of the women, a female operators. So there's not many female operators out there. And a lot of times it goes from engineering and you work your way up to that. And so that was definitely something I was considering because it's an interesting job. But um, it was really neat just kind of like listen to her story. Um, she's actually telling people what to do, like as far as operations, she's a supervisor and stuff. And so it was really neat to like hear her story and how she's had to work her way up. Yeah, sometimes they might not listen to her, but you just gotta smack them in the right direction. <laughs> I think it's just a different atmosphere compared to school versus work. My name is Savannah Jacoby and I'm a double major in journalism and electronic media and political science. And I am a executive producer here for Torchlight News on campus and I'm the communications director for the College Republicans. Obviously being a young woman right now, looking ahead at my future and seeing a career in, in, po in political commentary is kind of like intimidating just because so many men rule um, this type of era and, and have for years and years and years. I, I can be really headstrong in this environment and kind of growing up back to like what I said growing up in the family that I did, my dad never made me feel that I was below him or below a man. But I do have to say that it is a tough industry for women to just kind of jump in and be, oh, the, the top anchor or, or the top journalist. It's, it's very a, a man-focused um, world in journalism. I obviously am a co-producer with a, a, with a guy and so we've definitely butted heads and so we've kind of had to find our own groove as to like how we want to run things and I have to admit it is tough because I'm pretty headstrong so like I like I mean I like to have my way and even to now it's almost the end of the semester and and we still we still get in like those little like spats where we're just like it's not gonna work, like, we're gonna have to figure something out, but like, eventually, you know, I think it's kinda like both of us understand that we have to just agree. So, for me, you know, I look, I've always looked up to Ivanka Trump, even before Trump announced that he was running for president, I, I've always kinda followed her career. She has her own blog, her own fashion line, and I'm really big into that kinda stuff, and always have been, and so, I've always looked up to her, not only as a woman, but as a mother, as a career, 
career setter, a goal, I mean a goal getter, honestly. And so it, it's kind of harsh seeing that, you know, now that President Trump is in the office and they're kind of doing all this backfire at Ivanka and Mel Melania like, like they deserve it. I mean, it's not like they asked for it. I mean, they're there because they're, I mean, her husband, her father is the president and you know, Ivanka stepped back from her business to move to DC with her husband to to be with her father and so I think that says a lot about her character and even for Melania you know she wants to support her young her young child and and stay back with him and I don't think she should get backlash for that because if she wants to support her son in his environment then what's wrong with that and for me you know I would hate for someone to just be like well you have kids, um, you don't need to be working full full time. What if I stop working and be a stay at home mom and I let my, if say so, husband take care of us? What are they gonna say then? Oh, well she, she doesn't, she's just uh, stuck up and doesn't care. She thinks she can just do whatever with her kids. And so it's kind of tough to, to look at like people getting that backlash from you know being a single mother or being in a marriage and not working and and I don't even know what the answer could be for that you know what is the middle ground what work part time and then you're not so lazy or 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 what it's very very hard as a single parent to be respected as a professional when they see that you can't have all of your focus and all of your attention on your job because you have so many responsibilities outside of work. I think there's a tendency for single moms um, to feel like the world sees us as inadequate, that we were not able to maintain a partnership, that we don't have a husband, so that means something's wrong with us. Um, when in reality, I feel like all of the women that I know that are single moms or divorced or have chosen to be happier or to leave an abusive relationship or to leave a very unhappy relationship that sets up a negative role model for your children. And that was certainly the decision for me. But um, I very frequently am questioned as to, so when did you get divorced and why did you get divorced and why are you still single if it's been over 10 years? But there definitely is a negative opinion of single moms. I think so far from what I've seen, I think the millennial generation will be progressive in this issue. Yeah, I definitely think that our generation is bringing it. That's why it is the way it is right now at a college level is because it's just now integrating. So like, I feel that we are the ones that are like, oh, well, you know, we're women and, and we're, we're gonna make a career for ourselves, so let's go ahead and start now. I mean, it might not be that way once we get in, but the more we push ourselves, the more we get up the courage to do it, we're only gonna make it easier. I see, I see this getting better. I mean, obviously the rates of women in STEM and male-dominated careers are much higher now than they were. Yeah, there's still room for growth. Once we figure that out, it starts with the little ones. We need to influence them, and then I think we will continue to progress. The focus of the world is on relationship and love and money, relationships and love and money. Everything you read, articles on how to have um, better relationships and better sex and um, you know m better bodies and to be thinner and more beautiful and wear nicer clothes and um, the media is overwhelming. I, I intentionally don't look at any of it for that reason, I can't possibly live up to all the expectations that media has of me. To be the perfect mom, to be the perfect, um, you know, employee, to come home all bright and happy and, you know, have lots of energy for my children all the time when, as a healthcare worker, when I'm running nonstop for 14 hours, doing nothing but taking care of other people, the last thing I want to do sometime is come home and take care of somebody else. But that's my job and I do it happily and that was my choice to do that as well. And that's my joy, that's my balance is, is what I've chosen at home as a mom when the only people that I have to make happy are myself and my family.